Hi everyone! Around half a year ago I built a 3D printed robot arm. This one. And uh, a lot of my subscribers asked me if uh, I can make a build video of this arm and also if I can make this project open source. And uh, today is gonna be the first build video of this arm. And I'm not uh, gonna just build the same arm. I'm gonna change the design in order to implement some improvements. And before we continue, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also support me on my Patreon page. Let's get started. Here I have a kinematic diagram of the original robot. For the uh, current version, for the new version of the robot, the kinematic diagram is gonna be more or less the same, but just slightly simplified. So here, this is the base of the robot. This is the first joint, which rotates like this. The second joint rotates like this. Third one, like this. Fourth one, like this. Fifth one, and sixth ones. And uh, we always count the joints from the base to the gripper. And the dimensions are, this is D1, R1, R2, R3. D3 goes inside, D4, and D6. And these values is equal to R1 is 47, this one. D1 is 133, R2 is 110, R3 is 26, D3 is 7 mm, D4 is 117.5 mm, and the last one, D6, is 28 mm. In the new version of robot, we will simplify this uh, diagram by eliminating D3. So D3 instead of 7 mm is going to be 0 mm. And this will simplify the inverse kinematic and as a consequence, this will simplify our Arduino program. This value D3 is a basically misalignment between the axis number 4 and the axis number 1. So the axis number 4 is 7 millimeters shifted in this direction with respect to the axis number 1. So in the current or new design, we're going to shift this fourth axis, axis number four, into this direction, seven millimeters. And like this, uh, it's gonna, uh, this axis is gonna be well aligned with the first axis and uh, with the rest, uh, with the other axis. Uh, there is also uh, some other issues in this design, which we are going to address in our new or current design. And uh, one of these issues is the heating of the motors. And the problem is that some of the motors, like for example, this one, the motor of axis 6, or this one, the motor of the axis 5, or this one, they are well enclosed inside uh, plastic parts. And like this, there is no much air circulation around them. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put some holes in these plastic parts in order to facilitate the air circulation. There is also some uh, minor issues, like for example, one of them is that this part touches the belt. Maybe you can see it. This is less important, but still I will fix it. So uh, let's look at the Fusion 360. The arm is designed in uh, Fusion 360 and uh, it consists of three parts. One, two, three. And why it's three parts? Because my computer is quite old uh, and weak and it cannot handle too many parts in Fusion. So that's why I split the arm on the three, uh, three parts. The first part uh, have the axis 6, axis 5 and axis 4 and part of the axis 3. But the axis 3 itself is on the second, uh, second uh, file, so it's here. It also has the axis 2 and axis 1 like this and uh, the last file contains just the bottom part of the base so uh, here you can already see the modification which I made uh, like I added these holes for the better ventilation of motors I also changed uh, this motor for a little bit more powerful motor, like this Axis 6 uh, is gonna be uh, more powerful, gonna have the higher torque. 
and I also shifted axis number 4 to the right 7 millimeters like this axis number 4 is going to be well aligned with all other axes. So I already 3D printed these parts and this is what we are going to assemble today. So to 3D print it I used uh, my uh, Prusa i3 Max 3 and uh, this is a slicer and you can see how I put all the parts on the bed. Of course I used support and but this is support only from the build plate. The fuel density which I use is 50% and uh, I used PETG material just because it's more durable and it can handle higher temperatures than the usual PLA. PLA. I printed the parts separately because uh, for me it's easier because if you have fail like this it's only one part fails and not all of them. First of all, we need to remove the support and clean the parts. So this is 3D printed parts. This is two motors. One motor is for axis number 6 and uh, this motor is for axis number 5. This is number 8 and this is number 11. So this motor goes here. Like this. This part goes on the top. Here I will glue two magnets. Afterwards we have a bearing which goes from each side. This part is a pulley for the for the belt goes over here. Afterwards, this one goes like this. This pulley goes back here. And this is a bracket. So now let's assemble all of this. We will start with this piece. So we need a small screw to put in this hole. And there is a nut. It's just like this. Next, let's uh, fix uh, this motor here. So wires goes to this hole. And we secure the motor with a small M2 screws. This one goes on top. Now this bearing goes just here like this. And this one it's uh, we can either glue it or leave it like this because it's quite tight fit. I will just put a small amount of glue. A little bit here and a little bit here. Now the second bearing, which goes here. Now this part goes over here. Now to fix here I need to use 
three double pins of double pins. I have them just here. Yeah, they're installed and afterwards they go in these three small holes. Like this. This looks quite nice already. It moves very freely. Okay, to fix uh, this uh, bracket here, I have a hole through which we need to put a screw. So this is our screw, this is our nut. It moves very smoothly. This is exactly what we need. So this is a belt which goes here, like this. But before using this belt, we need to install the motor. So this motor goes here. This is the motor for the axis fifths, for the axis number five. And we need to put the wires through this hole. And these wires will go here in this channel and afterwards also through the same hole. But for the moment I will leave them. Now I will secure the motor with uh, these uh, screws. And this motor moves like this so we can tighten the belt. So this is a pulley which goes on the motor. This is the belt. So pulley here, here. And it goes on the motor like this. So first I will tighten the belt with all the force that I have. Now I need to adjust the this pulley in order to have the belt parallel to the entire system. So something like this and I need another key. Nice, so this is axis number six and this is axis number five. Now I will fix this pulley here. So it goes just here, but I will put a little bit of glue. Nice, very tight fit. So now I need to glue two uh, magnets over here. This is my magnets. So I will put first the magnets on this plate and I will put the magnets with different polarity facing up. Like this is gonna better attract all the magnetic parts. So now I need to glue this, uh, these two magnets in the, these two holes. Just a little bit of sandpaper on the magnets. And I need to put these magnets here. And uh, this part is finished.
and I can show you why I have these hinges. It's actually to put the zip tie here like this. So now with this zip type you can uh, put an external wire here, just in case. And maybe just one last bit that we can put this bearing over here. Ta-da! And now you can see them uh, both together. So this is the current version or new version and this is the old version. And I'm really satisfied with the way how it moves. It's super smoothly. And uh, the rest of the robot we're gonna assemble in the next uh, videos. And by the way, you can also see that uh, now I'm using the longer motor than this one in order to have the more torque on the six axis. So today we assembled the part of the robot. We assembled the axis number six and axis number five. In the next videos, we are going to continue to assemble this robot. So please subscribe to this channel in order not to miss this and also support me on my Patreon page. See you next time.